Hi everyone and welcome to Cooking with Cricket. Today I'm going to show how I make my beef stew. Uh, several weeks ago I made some homemade beef stew and posted a picture of it on my Facebook. And a friend of mine named Tim asked me could I do a video of it. So I did a video like over a year ago but I'll just go ahead and redo a new one. So uh, I'm going to use my crock pot to get this started because I'm going to be going off later on today. So uh, that way I can leave this cooking. But normally I do this on top of the stove and you can do it either way. So I'm going to do the first part in the crock pot and then the next step on top of the stove. And I know I'm very confusing. <laughs> so let's just get started. So with my crock pot on high. I'm going to go ahead and get the broth going, and then we'll cut up the meat and all. So I have two 14-ounce cans of just beef broth. And I'm going to add like a small whole onion. This onion, all I want it to do is to flavor everything. Uh, I will be removing it. If you want to keep the onion in yours, then wait till we, you add the potatoes and carrots because by the end of the day that's going to be so soggy and mushy and we just don't like that. That's us. I'm going to add a little bit of uh, kosher salt, a little bit of black pepper, some, of course you've guessed it, parsley. And I will be re-seasoning this once I get to the point where I'm adding the potatoes and carrots. And add some paprika. No, don't want to add too much. We're probably adding about a fourth of a teaspoon. And some minced garlic. I'm adding a teaspoon. And of course my hot sauce. Just a couple of dashes. I just love this brand this I know it's great value but it's not this hot overpowering where you can't eat it and then some Worcestershire sauce I don't really measure it but I'm probably gonna put in like a tablespoon this is optional but this is optional but you know how when you go to um, barbecue places their sauce. This is like a mustard vinegar sauce. Uh, we always keep a bottle of it on hand. I'm just going to add a little squirt in there. It, uh, just to give it a good taste. Just a little squirt. It was probably a half of a teaspoon. Now, while this is heating up, I'm going to get started on the meat. Alright, on your stew meat, you can buy the stew meat or what we did. I found a beef roast at Sam's for a good price on sale. And we buy whatever's on sale. Uh, and this had two in there. So I just put one in the freezer to put that up for a roast later on. And I'm just going to cut this up. But you can do that just uh, to a cheap piece of meat and cut it up because you're cooking this low and slow. So it's going to be tender. So I'm just going to cube this up. About like that. Like little half inch cubes. So let me get this meat cubed up. And then I'll be back. Alright, I have my beef cut up actually in about inch cubes instead of half inch cubes. Now I'm going to season them with some salt and put some pepper on there. And I'm just going to put a light dusting of flour. Just 
because we're going to sear them a little bit in the pan. We don't want a lot of flour. Just a little coating. And I did wash my hands before I went and after I cut it up and before I added the salt and all. Just kind of toss these around. Gonna throw them in a bowl and me check the stove. Okay, Nikki, you can pause it. Actually, get me out a little bit more flour and throw in here. Yeah, well, a little bit more than that. Your defin of a, definition of a little, little bit, bit more, baby. Your definition like, of Like, get me a good pinch, a good night of sprinkling. You're not going to give me too much. Your definition of a little bit There's mine some more. is way different. A little bit more. There you go. Thank you. All right, in my frying pan over medium high heat, I'm going to add some olive oil. You can add whatever oil that you like. A good couple of tablespoons. I'm going to let the pan get hot and then we're going to sear up our beef cubes. I have before been in a hurry and totally skipped this step and just added the meat to my broth and it did just fine. So, my oil's hot. Now, I'm just going to, I don't have that much and I'm not worried about um, evenly spreading them out and all that. I'm just going to add what all I have to the pan, then kind of spread it out. If you had more than this, I would do it in two batches, but we just want to kind of sear them up. So I'm going to let them go on this side, turn them over. And then I'll be back. We're almost there. See how this piece looks. So I just kind of get them seared up. Now, when I put my meat in my broth, the little uh, brown bits and stuff that's on this pan, I'm going to add a little water, kind of squish it around and add that too because that's some good uh, that fall and that's some good flavor right there so i'm calling these almost ready and i'll meet you at the crock pot i'm just gonna add in my beef cubes in my broth i'm gonna leave my crock pot on high for about an hour to get it all going and heat it and then I'll turn it on low. See and kind of scrape up those bits. That's some good flavor right there. And add that in. And leave it on high for an hour. Turn it down to low and let this go for several several hours and then I will be back when it's time to do the next step. All right, my meat has been cooking on low for around five hours. And if you want to do the next step completely in the crock pot and just go ahead and add your potatoes and carrots and then a little bit extra water or um, broth to cover and more seasonings, then that's fine. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my meat out, put it in my uh, stew pan, and then I'm going to strain my broth over in it um, to get out like those garlic pieces. And sometimes the flour from where we seared it can leave like soggy pieces. And, and this is just the way I do it. I like a smooth broth, but you don't have to do it this way. So this is just an extra step that I take. So I'll meet you at my pan. Now, even if I had cooked mine in my pan on my stove, I would still do this step. Just something that I like to do. And this, um, the broth right here, this is real good and concentrated and 
Got all that good flavor in it. And I will get out these pieces, a little bit of meat right here. But see that? That's what I don't like when you eat the broth to just gummy little parts. But remember, that's just me. That's what we like to do. So now I'm going to taste my broth. And we're going to re-season because we are adding a lot more items to it. More items, so you're supposed to season each step. My son's uh, favorite part is the broth. A lot of people cook their beef stews real thick, but I will leave mine kind of thin. And it's according on how the potatoes cook, too. Sometimes potatoes are cooked and just fall all apart and thicken everything up. And sometimes I've had potatoes that seem like I boiled them for an hour and they never would get good and soft. Mm, that's good, but it is salty. But that will get corrected when we add the potatoes and carrots. So now we can fix that when we uh, adjust the seasonings now. I have a lot of potatoes. Not that many carrots because none of us really like carrots but my husband. But I can eat them cooked like this. And um, my son, who could eat about the whole pot itself, and then my sister and nephew's coming over, so I have a lot. You don't have to add that many, but I did cut my potatoes and carrots chunky. So I will be adding another can of beef broth. I'm going to cut it on high just to bring it up to a bowl, and I'm going to add enough water just to cover. that's good and for now I'm not going to add any more salt I will taste it right before I serve it to see if it needs any but the broth was already good and salty and I know we've added potatoes and potatoes will absorb a lot of that salt and I'm adding some more parsley that's about a half a teaspoon and just a dash of paprika and a little bit more Worcestershire just a little bit I'm going to bring this up to the bowl and then I'm going to turn the heat down and let it gently boil until everything gets done and I will taste it in a little bit in about 30 minutes for seasoning and if this cooks down and the juice is too uh, thin still you can add a slurry of water and flour or water and cornstarch to thicken it up but anyway I'll be back and like I said you can just still finish this off in the crock pot too so if I was finishing it off in the crock pot I would have turned my crock pot back on high so we'll be back okay my beef stew is done and these potatoes like cook real mushy <laughs> and everything but um and the juice is thick I don't know if you can see that the broth but anyway I'm gonna pull it to the back my meat kind of cooked all apart but that's okay it's how we like it so I'm gonna cover it up let it sit on the back of the stove till my biscuits get done and then we'll service up some and I did add some more salt to it here's my beef stew yes I ate my <laughs> beef stew out of a plate and um, the potatoes really thickened up the broth a lot of times it don't get that thick but it's according on what type of potato that you buy and stuff and here's my biscuit but anyway, it's real good, and I hope you enjoy. And Tim, this is for you. Let me know if you make it. I hope you enjoy.